Good evening, everybody. It's Friday night. What are you up to tonight? Um, we haven't done quilt cam in a while. This was kind of a last minute thing. I mentioned it yesterday in yesterday's blog post. Um, I mentioned it a couple times through social media. So hopefully you were able to catch up with the fact that we are able to do live today because I'm home. I came home from the cabin today and I stopped by uh, my friend Melinda's house um, near Davidson, North Carolina for four chairs. And then I drove right on down to Charlotte and picked up four bookcases for the library at Quiltville Inn. Hi, everybody joining. I see you. Wonderful thumbs ups and hearts. It's good to see you tonight. So with a van full of bookcases and chairs, I drove my way home, took a nap, filled some book orders, and here we are. Um, spring break time is busy. I know it's busy on everybody's schedule. And I have some spring break activities happening over the next week. And I wanted to squeeze in a quilt cam as uh, optimally as we could. And tonight's the night. Many of you saw on my blog post today and over the last few days and through Instagram and Facebook that I've been working on my winter blues quilt. And it's all at the layout stage. I took the blocks, both the main block and the alternate block and my sashings over to Quiltville Inn, moved some more tables around and made myself a place where I could lay those out, start the assembly process in a place where Sadie Jane can't go block surfing while I'm, I'm not there. So <laughs> they will be safe until the next time I'm up there. Um, other things that have gone on since we've tried to do this last, it was a few weeks ago we tried and that was when uh, Facebook experienced their global outage. It was not working, Instagram was not working. Boy, was that a freak out. It kind of lets you know just how addicted to something you are. Just what a huge part of our lives, um, social media, and the connectivity that we have one with another has become. I missed y'all, so I'm glad that we're back. In the interim, I have been um, to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, where I taught for uh, a week there for Mountain Quilt Fest. Busy, busy schedule, very full classes, and lots of excitement happening there. I love Pigeon Forge in the spring. The trees are just starting to bloom. The, the little pigeon river is flowing by, the geese and the other birds are out doing their springtime thing, and my favorite thing to do during lunch break is to take a walk along that river and see what's happening in the world. It's a breath of fresh air to go to Pigeon Forge in March, so I will be back with them um, in March of 2021. We're going to do this in every other year thing. Um, same thing with Hershey. I'll be in Hershey this year, and then I will be in Hershey again in 2021. That leaves me 2020 to get Quiltville in up and running and functional. I was home from Pigeon Forge just two days, and then I flew to Louisiana for the Gulf States Quilting Association event. I had a lot of fun there. Many wonderful teachers there. Um, Nancy Mahoney and I both tag-teamed each other in Pigeon Forge and then on down to Louisiana and we actually took the same flight back to Atlanta home when we were done in Louisiana. So it was really nice to spend some extended time with her and I had some fun with Gudrun Erla as well. She was in the next classroom next to me and she came into my classroom and photobombed my class with her stripology ruler. We were working on crab apples um, from the Adventures with Leaders and Enders book. I had to think for a minute. Just had to think for a minute. And we were subcutting strip sets. Well, she took all those strip sets. She laid them out. She plopped that ruler down and she subcut everybody's strip sets for the checkerboard treetops in nothing flat. So I, I love what other people bring um, to my class, to the quilting world in general. And I love the time that we are able to work on those friendships as well. It's been a, a wonderful year so far, as far as 2019 goes, of getting to hang around other instru instructors in the industry. And that's something that I don't usually get when I'm the only one teaching on the road um, for a guild event or such. So it's been wonderful. Also, this is a, a big heads up for something that started today, and I wanted to mention it early so that you know. You need to go to the CNT Publishing blog. Um, it's CT publishing.com I think or CT pub um, Google it you'll catch it on their blog today we're starting the string frenzy blog hop and it's 
a great lineup of people that I really admire and appreciate who are joining in on my blog hop um, this week. My day will be next Wednesday, but starting um, today, you can start at the CNT blog and the whole lineup of what um, is going on and where to find what's going on is on their blog page today. Tomorrow morning starts off with Pat Sloan. So I'm anxious to see what Pat has to say about String Frenzy. I know it feels like it's been out forever, but it really wasn't officially released until December. That was the middle of the holidays. And then I was gone to Japan and then February rolled in and I was in Arizona and everywhere else. And we just decided, you know what? April is my spring break. Let's run this during my spring break. So you're gonna find some really neat activities and um, things happening over the next several days through the String Frenzy blog hop. If you check my blog tomorrow, I will also have the lineup for that. Pat Sloan is tomorrow. Today was CNT. The main event starts with my publisher. So there we go. So what am I working on today? How many of you loved Talking Turkey from String Fling? I can't get enough of, of red strings and my red string bin overfloweth. I've got a plan. I have a plan. I, I love um, the red start came out around Valentine's Day again, and I just I just needed to work with it. I've got a plan for some rectangles that go this way and some squares that go the diagonal. And so this is what I'm working on. And I thought it was right up there with um, the string frenzy release. So and the, and the blog hop. For those who are new to string piecing, I've done many, many quilt cams where I've, I've shown how I do string piecing before, but it's very, very simple. And th these are done on phone book pages. Phone book pages are probably the best, the best hands down string piecing foundation that is out there. It's thin, it's crisp, it tears easily, and my string quilts are very piece heavy. So I want to get the foundation out of there if I can. So what I do is cut the foundations that I need from the phone book pages. Case in point, Greater Macon, Forsyth, Warner Robbins, phone book. Does it have a year on this? I don't think it has a year on this. Nope, just has area code on this. This is a small one. They come bigger, they come thinner by all means. Small towns, really thin ones. Big towns, if you can still find those big honking phone books like we used to have, snatch them up, save them, they're good. Phone books at most anymore are just yellow pages. And you know what, when I'm looking something up, I like to look at, at yellow pages to see all of the, the category that I'm looking for, all within a few pages that I can flip flop through and read their hours and, and compare side by side. So I hope that the yellow pages they never get rid of. This one is small. So it enabled me to cut my foundations across the page and it's left a little bit of the glue on the, on the, on the edge here so that my, my things are still connected so I don't have them scattered all over the paper. I will trim them after. The reason I trim rectangles to width before string piecing on them, instead of just covering a whole page and then cutting with the strings, if I was cutting across the strings, it wouldn't matter, but I'm trying to avoid having seams really close to these two edges. So I cut my rectangles the width that I desire, and I start piecing them so that I can avoid having any seams in the skinny edges on, on either side. What I'm sewing on today, this was one has not come out for quite a while. This is my Electro Hygiene. It's a 1950s made in Japan straight stitch model. Some people call it a, a Singer clone, but I just call it a Japanese import because really that's, it's not a clone. It may have the, a similar body style, but it's not the same. It's stylized, it's upgraded, it has a, a knob to drop the feed dogs. It's just one step above what the old Singer 15s were. So how can it be a clone if it's, if it's one step above and it's different? So it can be similar, but not the same. But I love the green color as far as electro hygiene goes. Uh, remember your old sew and vac shop. Electro hygiene was a vacuum cleaner brand. So just in, in true fashion, you could have your electro hygiene 1950s vacuum that made your house a very healthy place to live and your electro hygiene machine that made for very clean, healthy sewing. <laughs> so that's what I've got today. Pardon me, I've got... Uh, dry throat here. 
everything is blooming. Everything, everything, everything. And that means that my Zyrtec is in high form, which also means that everything on me is, is drying out like crazy. So if this is your first time at Quilt Cam, I'm looking for my sign and I don't think I put it up here where it is. Um, if you want to share something with me, I hope you do. I'd love to see what you're working on. You can email it to me at one word, quiltcamtime at gmail.com. Quilt cam time, nothing needs to be capitalized, at gmail.com. Where did I put that sign? Oh, here it is. Does this help you? It doesn't have to be capitalized. I did that just so that you could read the words a little bit easier instead of having it all lowercase. But that's where quilt cam and show and share photos go. When I am paper piecing, I'm looking for a lot of variety. So guess what I did the last 15 minutes before quilt cam started? I went through the ugly old reds in my stash, the ones I really didn't want hanging around anymore, and I stripped them down. I use my AccuQuilt. I don't even bother to iron them because it's a string, and you're going you're gonna, to um, press them as you go, and it doesn't really matter. But this one, can anybody see? Can you see what's on this one? It's a Y2K fabric. It says 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000, 2019 means too long for this to be in the stash. So it became a candidate. Other things that became a, a candidate to my, my AccuQuilt today. Old Christmas fabric. Green and white hearts. Little rocking horse ponies. There's two dyes that I use when I want to annihilate fabric into um, strings. For string piecing. I have a one inch die and a one and a half inch die. Those two mixed with the, the organic nature of regular strings that happen as I'm sewing give me the variety that I need. I try not to have everything on the inch or the half inch but I go for, for everything from three-fourths of an inch up to two inches thereabouts and I have a lot of strings that happen naturally as I'm working with fabrics and getting down to the edge of whatever but if I want to just really Clear stuff out. Hello, 1980 something red. This one's an inch and a half. I will run things through those two dies, inch and inch and a half. And then it just helps bulk up what I've got. I was down to the point where I had a lot of rusty reds, a lot of deep burgundies, and I needed some more of those bright 1980s, 90s reds to, to spark this up. So this is what I've got going here. You can see, whoops, a little trim on there. So the, the polka dots are fairly recent. The stripe's not that old. The floral, I know that was a Lorene Cinema, so that's several years old now, and then this old Christmas thing. But when it's in the quilt, you're not going to see it. I love the fact that this, this archive of red fabrics in this string quilt is a testament to the fabric that has come through my life as a quilter over the past many years. Your string quilt will have your own signature based on the fabrics that you put into it. No two are ever alike. So in true string frenzy fashion, I'll show you what I'm doing here. I've got my stitch length set a little bit small. It's about 16 stitches per inch. These are, these are the ones that are trimmed. These are the ones that, that are not. And I'm going to move these aside just a second. I've got one in the machine. My iron is on. It cools itself off, so, and I'm just going to take, I've got the last strip on that one, just a couple. Try working on two at a time. We've done this before. I could chain 47 in a chain, but then how long is it going to take me to cut them all apart and press them all one side and then add more pieces? This way, I can just easily cruise through these. This is another one of those. Was it red or is it white? What is it? It sat in my stash for a long time, so I went ahead and put it in the red strings. I ran it through the one-inch strip die. Okay, so we're going to cut this. And we'll do just a little bit of this, and then I'm going to jump right on into your emails. If I don't want a seam really close to the edge on these, I will start as far away as I'm willing that last strip to be and then work to the other side. These are fairly narrow. Doesn't she sound lovely?
And the paper is only a guide. It's just giving you a firm foundation with no stretch in any direction, and it's giving you a size to shoot for. So as long as I reach dimension, it doesn't matter whether I have less fabric on this side or more fabric in the margin over here. The paper is just a guide for size and stability. So that just goes right in my pile. We'll choose something else. Oh yeah, how many of you recognize this little guy? They need to go away, so cut them small. That stuff that's been sitting around, don't look at the print on it, look at the color. It's got fabulous color. Now this one is a little bit too wide. I think I'm just going to take this guy and snip him in half. This is one of those fabrics. What, what color is it? It was big apples. What, what color is it and how are you going to use this scrap? Really? It's interesting when placed in a string quilt. So I'm just going to cut a piece this way and maybe put that piece, it's wider, so maybe put it closer to the outside edge where I know it will cover, but I won't have any seams too close. Okay. These pieces, I'm not even pressing before sewing down. I'll press them next go round. Okay, so and I just snip between, and I just work on two blocks at a time. Oh, this is perfect. I'll show you in just a second. Now, why are you not on? I think my auto timer timed out. Okay, so I have just a little bit of margin here. Do not sew another seam close to this edge. It's not worth it. Instead, extend longer on the opposite side. You don't want any seams really close to that edge. So I'm going to leave that right there and make sure that I piece longer the opposite side. On these guys, I'm trying to do four to five strips per block. Sometimes I can fit more, sometimes um, less, but three is not enough. So I just know. And it feels really good to get these things moving out of the stash. It's an exciting year with the release of String Frenzy. A lot of the workshops I'm teaching this year are from String Frenzy. And that means we are going to be deep into string quilts all year long. Okay. So you can see here, I've got that apple fabric. It's actually going to be trimmed about that narrow once I'm done trimming. So what is it? Can you even tell that it's apples or is it just color? Look at your fabric a little bit differently. You'll be surprised the multitude of fabric sins you can get away with when it comes to string piecing. All right, I'm going to jump right in to quiltcamtime at gmail.com. Wow, Casey Garrett says vintage blocks, vintage painted blocks. Got so excited to email you I forgot the photos. Oh my goodness, how fun are those? So are they done with that tricam embroidery? Let me see if I can do this here. Oh, how sweet is that? So it looks like she's got her Singer 500 out, her Rocketeer. And do you remember, in, it was, I think it was the 1970s when that tricam stuff was really popular? And you, it was like an embroidery hoop on the lid of a cookie tin, right? And you'd stretch your fabric and put, put the hoop around the lid and you were, could paint instead of hand stitch. That looks exactly like what that is. How cool is that? That's really neat, and I love the machine, too. She's a beauty. Thanks for sharing, Casey. All right, Karen says, finally finished last year's Leaders and Enders. So she's showing a picture of her um, checkerboard rails. Wow, that is bright and lovely. Look at that. Have you made a checkerboard rails? Are you working on the Leader Ender project? Guess who's working on coming up with next year's, this starts in July, Leader Ender Project. I love checkerboard rails. Every one that I see is just absolutely beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Then we have, they're just, there's pinging in as soon as, as fast as I can. So Paula says, yay for quilt cam. So happy to be enjoying some quilting cam tonight, quilting time tonight. 
I'm working on a wool applique table runner designed by Lisa Bonjean. Hello, spring. And you can see good fortune peeking through too. So let's biggie size this up and see what she's got there. Come on, baby. Oh my goodness. That is going to be so fun. Let's see. Will it turn sideways for me? Yes. Yeah, so you can see. Okay. So she's got a little watering can there, some flowers on her wool table runner on top of her good fortune quilt. It's wonderful to know that spring is on its way. When spring arrives, do you find yourself wanting to stitch outside? I've got a porch swing that came from my friend Melinda last week. We got to find the right place to hang it. But I envision sitting on that porch swing and just stitching a binding and listening to the cows and watching them wander down by the creek down below the back porch at Quiltville Inn. Outside stitching always sounds so great until we consider the bugs and the heat and the humidity and uh, every, everything else. So it's one of those things that's, that, you know, it sounds great for a while. Who knows? Then I like my air conditioner. How about you? That's beautiful. Thanks for sharing it. This one says, first time quilt cam, hope to learn a lot. This is what I'm working on tonight. It's called Shadow City. It looks like a pioneer braid quilt. Let me see. Oh, that is pretty. So she's doing a pioneer braid there with the corner stones and it's shaded. So it looks very three dimensional. That's really neat. Great job. So, okay. So updates on Quiltville Inn. We have added the split units. Um, so we have heat and air in the quilting quarters, in the dining room, and back in the kitchen. There was no air conditioning in this house in the whole 135 years of its um, life on the main floor. The previous owners did install a heat pump unit that fed up to the top floors, the living quarters up there, but not the ground floor. And I'm sure that the kitchen at one time was heated by a wood cook stove. So that would have taken care of much of the heat for the, for the ground floor in the house. But women need air conditioning. It may be the mountains, but it is the south and things get a little humid and we want our air conditioning. So we now have that working and 31 windows have been replaced, I think, since the last time that we did quilt cam. So um, things are moving along there. Shirley says Halloween wonky wishes. Ooh, I can't wait to see this. Finish what I started in the San Antonio workshop ready for the quilter. So much fun. And this is from Shirley. Bowman and she's in Sunrise Beach, Texas. Oh, how cute is that striped fabric? That is adorable. So she's done wonky wishes, which is our standalone pattern, little wonky stars with a black background and all of her favorite Halloween fabrics and that stripe as the sashing. How is that? That is just absolutely wonderful. Good to hear from you, Shirley. It seems like forever ago that I was in San Antonio and it was just February. It was just around the corner ago, but this year is flying by so fast already. Pat from Alaska says, you have to imagine the red border. Oh, Pat, this is glorious. So she's sharing her sampler quilt. It's like a, a 1800s red poison green cheddar and neutral and sounds like she's putting a red border on it. I think that is just stunning. So our, our day is getting lighter in Alaska now, finally. Um, I know the solstice was clear back in December. I'm still amazed at how light it stays now. And how dry the throat is. That is gorgeous, Pat. Judy Brill says, I'm working on my EPP that you got me addicted to. I also just need to bind my latest string piece to scrap quilt, which is my ultimate favorite quilt to do. Well, Judy, I'm in the same uh, club as you. As I'm working, and I know I need over 100 of these rectangles, the short strips that are the ends of the other pieces I've been working on just end up over here to my right. And I will work from them until they are gone. And then I will pull another handful out. Other things that I've pulled into this batch via the AccuQuilt. Just what color is this? Was it black? Is it red? Or is it white? Were you going to use this anywhere? If you're not, chop it up and put it in a string quilt. Here's another one of those. This was the back of, I think it's the, the back of my um, Dear Jane quilt actually. 
or maybe a different quilt. It's a black background with red flowers, but everywhere you cut it, it looks red. So is it red or is it black? Or can we just make it play as a red in with these red strings and make it go bye bye? Because it's just been hanging around forever. So let's sew some of this stuff up. Now some of these pieces may end up being too small to go across all the way. So I can join short things to short things and use it as one piece in another one. And working with just two pieces keeps this process quick and easy. Those apples are a hoot, but they were never going to play nice with anything else. Space here. I like to use stuff until the entire strip is gone. In fact, that little red, red and white check ended up on the floor. And ones like this, I mean, even though it's a red block. Anything with just a tiny little bit of neutral in it is going to add a bit of daylight on an otherwise block that just sits too dark. Okay, so I've got several of these pieces that are now too short to reach the entire way. So I can take two of these right sides together, sew them to each other, and then use it as one strip. And I just kind of throw these in as leaders and enders to keep my piecing continuous here. So nothing goes to waste and nothing is too short. You just join things end to end. Okay. I'm bringing this up to show you that things do not go straight. This little red one tapers down to skinnier at the end, and I think I, that makes things a little bit more interesting. This one will be trimmed. It's wider than I need it to be. But try not to have everything look like you pieced it from a strata of strips joined edge to edge to edge, just you know, regular strip piecing, and then you cut your rectangles from it. That's not the, the point here. We want things that look a little bit whimsical. I'm going to sew some of this millennium fabric on here. I never thought that old Y2K fabric would become my calling card, but everywhere I go, students bring me more. <laughs> so, cut it small. Okay, so when you have a piece like this, where you've joined short pieces end to end, there'll be a seam. And I like to take that seam and press it open. So this is one of those few times you see me pressing something open because it's gonna create a bump when it presses over itself or something is pressed against it. So I do press any joining seams open. And oftentimes this piece, because it has a seam in it, will become the first piece on the page right side up. So I can add another piece right side to it, and it's that piece that folds up and over the thread. This one doesn't have to double back against itself then. So it looks like we'll end up with another short end that can go somewhere else. Okay, and I do pre-cut. I just kind of measure about a finger's width larger than my paper so that I can have some room if shift happens. And I'm going to place this closer, I think, to the edge. So make sure that will cover all the way. And then that side is out of the way. It's so funny. This, this lamp is, is vibrating over here. And it goes back, and it comes back, and it goes back, and it forward. OK, I'll show you this one. Then we'll do some more email. Okay, so we got some fun placement on this one. 
the, the check makes your eye go just a little bit crazy. There's a little bit of white in there, but it's still very red. And when it's in the quilt, it's the red that's going to show. It just adds a little bit of daylight so that you can see it between these two other very similar in uh, value red strips. This little skinny one that tapers is interesting. And of course, the apples are very fun. I, I just keep sewing it up. If, if you have fabric that you don't like, just cut it narrow. Use the back side. Use it to extend the things that you do like. And that makes it really fun. Irene, she says, quilty time. Working on a block of the month called Mrs. Miller's Apprentice while visiting with you on Quilt Cam. I'm really excited to see you in Mineola and then here in Louisville. The sad, okay, so you guys know this. I'm teaching for um, the, the shop in Louisville in July. I think it's, it's right before I go to Pennsylvania. So we'll need to have, have you check to see if there's any more openings there. She says, the Saturday Orca Bay class is full. We have a few spots left in the Indigo, a go, go and Daybreak, but I suspect we'll be full up before long before we get to July. Can't wait for all of it. Oh my goodness, Irene, that is absolutely beautiful. So she's been working on this one. I love anything in a barn raising setting. Isn't that beautiful? Gorgeous. I can't wait to see you in April. And yes, I'm still holding on to that piece of uh, fabric for you. <laughs> if I find more. She has one piece of fabric that follows her around the same way the Millennium fabric does me. So, okay, this one's also done. There we go. How about a, a post office update? The windows are in. The roof has been repaired. Uh, um, this, the inside window framing has been done. What The wiring in the ceiling has been done. What we're waiting for right now is drywall in the ceiling. And then we can get things painted. Then we can get the back three areas floored. Then we can move in. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping by the end of summer that everything will be done. Um, things are just moving a little slower than we, we thought we wanted them. But you know what? Not being in there when roof leaks happened made me not want to be in so big of a hurry anyway. So, okay. Cute little Christmas. Little horses, little drums, little flowers, little whatever needs to go away. Put that on here. That's a short piece, so I can join that to something else. Let's pull something out we have not used yet. A lot of this stuff is kind of... All right, what is this? This is a true string. It's kind of an orangey red. It'll work. There. Remember, you're just building fabric while you do this, and it should be very relaxing. It shouldn't stress you out at all. I love to listen to audiobooks. How many of you know that there are audiobooks on uh, YouTube that you can just listen to? That's what I tend to do when I am um, not wanting to rush through the audible books that I listen to when I'm on a plane, because those I have to have a membership for and those I have to pay for. But the audiobooks that are on YouTube, just type in audiobook. You'll find all kinds of them for free. Okay, so this is what that one piece looks like with the little short piece added to make it long enough. This is the kind of thing that makes string piecing interesting. Here's another one that has three pieces added to it. Remember, anytime that you join anything, press the joining seams open so that it lays flatter and try to use that piece as the very first piece that you lay right side up so that no seams have to double back against it. I find that works really well. And I try not to always put them in the center. Sometimes I'll start with one a little bit off to the side so that they don't always end up directly in the middle. All right, let's look again, see who's joining us today. Did I ever show you guys um, the, the quilt top I brought back from retreat in Texas? I'm not sure I did. I'm trying to remember. I've got the wackiest thing, and you have to see it. But let's check some emails first. Okay, here we go. 
Anita Glasscock says, working on a wedding present for my niece, the embroidered blocks were finished by her grandmother long before she passed away. I added the Dresdens, and I love Quilt Cam. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, that is beautiful. I remember these, they were a cross stitch, kind of a kit block where you would buy it already stamped and then you would cross stitch that. It's absolutely lovely. So she's got her grandmother's blocks that she did long before she passed away. And then a lot of those blocks hang around and nobody ever makes them into a quilt because nobody has the desire to quilt them or, or whatever. So this is wonderful to add those Dresdens to that. It's really gonna be a cherished keepsake. Beautiful job. Okay, Cindy says, where did it go? First time live with you. Well, welcome, Cindy. So glad you're with us. She says, watch your YouTubes all the time. Spent today quilting a granddaughter's quilt on a friend's long arm, but wanted to be home in time to watch you live. So we're glad that you're here. Sometimes I wonder, why But why do people want to watch this, this, just this junk go through the machine? What is, a, what is it? What I love about it is the connection with you and the stories I hear from you and the quilts that you're working on and where the story led this, this quilt from grandmother's blocks to now and it's a, it's a wedding present and things like that. I love the reasons why we do what we do. So I'm really grateful that you're here uh, joining me tonight. So a special welcome to Cindy, who it's her first time, hopefully not her last. Glenda Reynolds says, bindings going on, see you in Mineola. I'm waiting for your picture to open up, Glenda. Let's see, will it? It's just showing up as a little blue square. Come on, there it is. Oh, it's your pumpkin quilt, yay. Remember, I'm down here in the basement and the laptop is hardwired to the internet so I get really good fast speed, but as for the phone, it's on cell data. The Wi-Fi is not that great down here, but she's got her pumpkin patch quilt going. So I'm looking forward to Mineola later in the month. That's my only venue this month is to teach for Stitch in Heaven. In May, I'll be teaching at the Grand Hotel Needle Art Seminar on Mackinac Island. So many of you are coming to see me there too. And I'm looking forward to joining with the other instructors and, and sharing in that uh, wonderful retreat. Okay, Mona Dickey says, Carolina Christmas and Emery Star. Hi from Minnesota. I made Carolina Christmas in aqua, coral, and gray for my daughter. Aqua neutral bonus half square triangles worked out perfect for Emery Star, which I'm binding now. Love bonus triangles. I do too. My, um, I, I made this, this is, this is kind of a funny story on my good fortune quilt. I counted the number of tri other triangles that I needed for the, the block with the half chevron. And I counted the, the number of squares that I needed to make the half chevron because it's one on each end. And then I cut that many rectangles. <laughs> so I ended up with twice as many green rectangles as I need. So those be also become a bonus opportunity, right? And if I turn those into half chevrons, well, then I have bonus triangles left from those to be the next thing. So the bonus triangles just keep on giving. Here's her photos. Oh my goodness, those colors are lovely. You can keep your snow though. I am so done with that. But that's the Carolina Christmas. Beautiful gray, coral, and aqua. Lovely. And then the next one. Oh my goodness. So this is what she did with the bonus triangles. Here's her Emery stars. If you like this one, I made this one for my niece when she was born. She's now three or four. Uh, mine was purple, made from bonus triangles. But she's used the bonus triangles from her Carolina Christmas to make this one. So bonus triangles are the gift that keeps on giving. If I can do anything that will save a bonus triangle in a usable size, even if that means skimping on the seam allowance just a bit, I will do it. Remember that the seam allowance is only the vehicle that gets you to unit size. It can be a little bit wider. It can be a little bit narrower. Your quilt won't fall apart as long as it's sufficient to hold the pieces together. So bonus triangles rock and they were often the quilt seeds that spur another idea for another great quilt to use those up. So thank you so much for sharing those quilts and the inspiration with us. And um, that's lovely. I can't wait, can't wait. 
Now this one's from Joyce, and she says, I've been bitten by the hexy bug. I have finished two flowers. Read your tips on your blog page. Thanks. And uh, oh, lovely. I think I've had that red fabric. If I turn this sideways, can I get a better view for you? Yes, I can. Let's see how big this. So she's doing yellow centers, red petals, and blue on the outside. Doesn't that just look like flower power? I love it. You know what they say about, about hexes, they're just like potato chips. You can't make just one, you can't make just two. I love, love, love them. Okay, one more and then this girl needs to sew. I can't believe we've already been into this for 40 minutes already. Diane Oaks, how are you, mama? She says, quilt cam yippee, dumped my bin of one and a half inch squares and started sewing them together. It was a perfect project for brainless sewing and creating. The piece has over 3,200 pieces, and it is still growing. And some of these fabrics are really ugly, but you don't notice. So I'm going to biggie size that just a little bit. So here's her postage stamp creation. She's over 3,000 pieces so far. She's doing a little bit of an artful arrangement there, but it's still growing. How far will your one and a half inch box take you? And what stories would all of the fabrics in that box tell about the quilts that you've made previously and remember if it's still ugly cut it smaller i love inch and a half squares i've been working with them recently okay i need to put some pieces through the machine here this one's getting there we're going to just continue to grab this same strip that i've been using if a strip is out of the bin i'm going to use it till it's gone from the short stack here and then i'll pull some more variety as needed don't give yourself a hundred choices to make. Give yourself just a few and work from there. And I snip the tails off so that I can feed another piece back to the end. I really love how this machine feels. She's solid. She's a clean machine. She's a clean green machine. Electro hygiene. I don't know what the what the um, jingle would have been, but it, it's just kind of fun to have a machine with a silly name. Electro hygiene. Did you clean your machine today? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Okay, we're still working on getting rid of this Y2K fabric. We'll just sew it all up. Just to notice, if you are ever in a workshop with me and you happen to be sewing with Y2K fabric, not just bringing it to show me, but it has to go in your project, you get a door prize. Like butter, baby, like butter. Okay. Oh, I did tell you I wanted to show you that, that crazy quilt top, too. Let me sew one more piece on here. Just to pull this in the realm of not too red, I've been sewing in a couple of pinks here and there just for variety because pink really is pastel red, right? Okay, can go in there. more the things you have to do to get sewing machine time starting tomorrow my my spring break really kicks into gear here's a piece that was binding it's also kind of a pinky red but i can open that up sew it in it's kind of a chevroni kind of thing I'm picking a friend up at the airport tomorrow morning and we are going hiking up in the mountains so there's a notice on the Quiltville store spring break starts tomorrow if you order anything over the next few days things will start to ship on the 11th after I drop her back at the airport 
there will likely be plenty of stitching time as well. But I'm looking forward to showing her my stomping grounds. Okay, ugly, ugly Christmas fabric. You are going down. That one was like torn off the edge, so it's really curly. Okay, this should finish this block up. Now, if you have nearly vintage Christmas fabric, just cut it small and let it play as a color. I think every scrap quilt needs a bit of Christmas and Halloween and Y2K all thrown in. It's amazing how you can go on just the dregs of your stash. Okay, so this one has four, but I think I'm going to leave it because if I sew another piece here, I'm going to lose half of this chevroni strip, which I think will be kind of cute. And we've covered the foundation completely. So piles are growing. When I'm done with these, then I need to do a bunch of squares that are on the diagonal, just square, not rectangle, also on the straight. It's going to be a cool design. Just wait till you see. Wait till you see what it does. Okay, so we are way to the top. Renee says, do you worry about stretching? Here's a tablecloth my friend's father embroidered. Do I worry about stretching what? You know, stretching? Stretching? No? Stretching? <laughs> I don't worry about stretching. That's why there's paper. The paper provides a total stable foundation. And then the, it's also, all, this is a straight piece rectangle, so there won't be any bias on the outside edge. It's going to be straight. So I don't worry about stretching, but not sure really what you were referring to. However, the quilting on this is, whoops, is beautiful. This is a tablecloth my friend's father embroidered, and I suppose she's quilted it up so that is gorgeous i love to hear about the men doing needlework you know if you are chair bound or you have um, an injury you're recovery, recovering from there were a lot of men that did cross stitch or needlepoint or english paper piecing it's not just limited to women that is absolutely stunning and i love how you've quilted it gorgeous so this one says let's see there she is a finish and making four patches. This is from Sue Palmer in Michigan. Hi, Sue. Got a finish yesterday. First time using a panel. I just kept adding borders, but couldn't resist the, the cute minions. Tonight I'm working on four patches for Narragansett browns instead of blues for some prep before November class in Shipshawana. And oh, that's going to be another fun thing. Shipshawana in November. It's going to be awesome. Photos being a little slow. Oh, that is so cute. I would keep adding borders to that too. So super cute. You know, when you're making quilts for kids, they don't care what you put into the piecing, do they? They just want it snugly and they want it to be a, a picture of something that they love. They're, they, they are very easy to sew for. Quilts for kids don't need to be a masterpiece. This is one that will be loved to shreds. I am absolutely positively sure. So if I could find that cute little minion panel, that is absolutely adorable. Okay. We'll see you in November. Okay. Joan Edwards says, finishing UFOs in New Hampshire. Oh, wow. That is cool. So she's working on kind of a drunkard's path variation that makes donuts. That would be another fun scrap buster because you're just playing with value, but your colors could be anything. Really fun. Okay, you want to see that quilt? I'm not sure if I showed this or not. I really don't remember. It's been that long since we've done a quilt pan. But when I went to Brazos House Retreat with some friends from Texas, it was the in-between teaching in San Antonio and teaching up in Denton. There's a free table. And for days, I had people restrain me from visiting the free table because it was either going to have to fit in my suitcase or be shipped home. As it was, this was shipped home. And I'm not sure what to do with it, but it was so hysterical. I just, I had to, I had to save it. 
I, I don't I don't even think I can take it all apart. It's been washed numerous times if you were to look at the back side. But can you see what's going on here? Can you see? Look at those giant polka dots. They're huge. And the seam allowances, well, they're huge too. Can you can you can you see? Look at those seam allowances. Now, I have a feeling that somebody else sewed the blocks because the patchwork on the blocks was not half so bad. But this but the seam this is the seam allowance on the sashing. Can you see where the seam is? It's like, well, okay, little overage, that's not a problem. But look what it does to the squares on the back side. There they are, sort of. Now they're rectangles, not squares. So I don't know if I dare take this thing. I don't think I dare take this thing apart. It's just, it was just too funny. I had to save it. And maybe it just gets squared up and quilted as is and is used for a picnic blanket or a tablecloth at Quiltville Inn. The block is wonderful. The colors are fabulous. The workmanship is, well, you know, good. She gave it a good try. The splashy polka dots are just a crack up. And the edges are nowhere near straight. And there's stuff coming undone, undone, undone at the edges. But you know what? When I see this, it just makes me happy. So maybe we have to do something like this as a sew along. It's four patches and half square triangles. No, this is not this year's new leader and ender challenge. It's just, it's, it's too intense. Nobody would do it. Nobody would do it. But wouldn't this be fun? Do you need, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four patches of the same variety. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight half square triangles. So it's kind of an updo on what we just did for our um, jewel box stars leader and ender. But isn't this just way too fun? So maybe this becomes a block for the next addicted to scraps column series with quilt maker because I, I just I just think it's hysterical. And and maybe we send in the quilt to go with the block so that people see what we're working from. And I'm sure there's a traditional name for this for this pattern, but this is just the funniest thing I have ever seen. I just, I, I love it. The fabrics are terrible. They're awful. They're 1950s, 1960s. Um, there's seersucker. There's all, all kinds of um, stuff. Some of the blocks you would just say, oh, low contrast, low contrast. So this is what's making me happy lately. And I, I would love to do it. In fact, if I do do it, I would love to find a big splashy polka dot just like that to set it with. So we'll throw that over, over there. Um, I found some really interesting quilts while I was antiquing in West Jefferson, North Carolina this past few days with my friend Tony. One of them I posted, let's see, if we went, if we went out, that must have been Wednesday. It had to have been Wednesday. Or was it Tuesday? Anyway, I did a Quiltville quote on one and it has a nine patch in the middle and like a hole in the barn door around the outside or turn dash around the outside, only it was three rails on the sides with that with and it was red, white, and blue. And it was the same block throughout the quilt, but the value placement changed. Let me see if I can pull this up for you because it's just really, really cool. And that would be another great sew along block. So this is what I'm I'm looking forward to as my travel winds down. I want to be home more so we can do more fun stuff, more quilt cam, more sew along um, from the comfort of my home instead of being on the road where I, I can't connect with anything. So um, let me see. Oh, here it is. Here it is. So if I biggie this just a little bit. Okay. This is all the same block. Can you see? Now, just imagine it was just a line drawing. Everything that you see happening here is because of value placement and color placement. But it's all the same block. How fun is this? We could do something like this and see all the different combinations we could come up with. 
and I love it in red, white, and blue for a patriotic quilt or a quilt of valor or something like that. I think I have one more where it's, um, is this the opposite side? This is the opposite side. We turned it over. There wasn't any room to lay it out. But take a look at the one in the upper left. These are all the same block. Can you get close enough? It's like I'm covering up my face. Got to move it this way. All the same block. It's just color and value placement. Isn't that fabulous? So that would be a fun thing to do. And just, I mean, they, they are all the same. It's just so different. So I would, I would love to play with that. And then the other one that we saw that I just said, no way, no way, no how, was this one. It was so shredded. This one has been used and loved and used and loved and used and loved. And it's kind of an eight point star slash ocean waves variation thing. There's, there's no way to straight piece that without inset um, squares. So I, I decided, nah, that one ain't happening. But it's beautiful. Anyway, there's so many ideas. So this is what, what I'm hoping for as the, the crazy travel settles down and we're able to do more things together and have more challenges more than just the mystery in the winter time and the the leader ender challenge in the fall that or in the summer that we'll be able to do more that we'll be able to share more that we'll be able to connect better and i'll be more and more and more in in one place to be able to do that so um what time are we? Oh, shoot. It's almost nine o'clock. So if it is early where you are and you're just getting into your mojo, I want you to see if you can sew some more. As for me, I'm probably going to finish up these couple of blocks and then I've got a lot to do to get ready to go pick my friend up at the airport in the morning. So um, we also have a fun thing happening on the blog tomorrow in conjunction with the String Frenzy blog hop be looking for a giveaway on my page tomorrow as well. Um, when can we do quilt cam next? Hopefully um, within the same month, when I get back from spring, spring break, we'll see if we can catch in with you again, because I've got a lot of this to do and um, need to make good use of the time that I've got to do it in. And for the rest of the week after tomorrow, We'll be up from in Virginia having fun up there. I'll post as often as I can so you can kind of keep tabs on what we're doing. And I want to wish everybody a wonderful, wonderful weekend wherever you are. I hope that you get some stitches in. We will catch you later next time from the basement. This is Bonnie Hunter at Quilt Cam signing off. Have a good evening, everybody.